सो नाउ आर वी गुड टू गो फॉर अ गुड रिविजन ऑन इंडिया थर्टी एट गाइस यस ओके सो लेट्स स्टार्ट द रिविजन इन थ्री टू वन एंड गो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द नंबर ऑफ इंडिया थर्टी एट नेम इंटेंजिबल एसेट्स द फर्स्ट पॉइंट वी डिस्कस्ड वॉज डेफिनेशन वॉट वॉज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ इंटेंजिबल एसेट इट्स एस आइडेंटिफाइबल नॉन मॉनिटरी विदाउट फिजिकल सब्सटेंस हेल्ड फॉर यूज वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ आइडेंटिफाइबल we will call any asset identifiable when it meets any of the one conditions out of these two first either it can be sold separately see it is not necessary to sell the intangible but the question is can you sell it separately from the other assets or does it arise from a legal contract like amalgamation or business combination if the answer is yes if any one is met you will call it as an identifiable asset right what is the meaning of non monetary asset non monetary asset means it is not realizable in fixed or determinable amounts we took one example that for example if intangible is shown at 10 lakhs it doesn't mean that for sure you will going to get 10 lakhs right you will extract the benefits but you will not get cash or fixed amount worth 10 lakhs right that means it is a non monetary asset of course we will discuss in detail about this in index 21 okay then apart from this there was some guidance which was also given on this what was the guidance talking about it says when an asset has both elements tangible as well as intangible where we will classify the asset you will have to see which is the more significant element for example if you are purchasing a software in a cd you are paying you are making the payment for the software and not for the cd that means this will be classified as intangible but when you are purchasing a computer in computer there is some softwares you are making the major payment for the computer that is why you will classify this as a tangible item right okay next point was recognition criteria same like india 16 febs and cosh can be measured reliably of course it should be the definition this is implied point okay next point is measurement measurement we have two criteria initial measurement subsequent measurement initial measurement always 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 at cost subsequent measurement we have two models cost or revaluation right initial measurement always at cost what if the asset is purchased it is same like 16 purchase price less trade discount and non refundable taxes at all the direct attributable expenses no point of decommissioning is there because there is no substance in intangible asset okay also there is one point of deferred consideration same example which i gave in india 16 if you buy to uh, if you go to buy a let's say intangible asset and if you are making the payment after one year they might charge you some interest such interest will be transferred to profit and loss and not capitalized simple okay what if you acquire the asset by way of exchange same like india 16 for example there will be one incoming asset there will be an outgoing asset the outgoing asset will be de recognized at carrying amount what about the incoming asset for recording the incoming asset in exchange we have three preferences first preference fair value of asset given a plus cash paid if any second preference fair value of asset acquired third preference carrying amount of asset given up right also under this if is if there is a question which says that the transaction lacks commercial substance in that case we will have only one preference that is carrying amount of asset given up right if whenever i have written same like india 16 if you are not able to recall that point you can refer india 16 also okay if you acquire any asset by way of government grant we will refer india 20 next point is asset acquired as a part of business combination what you if you acquire any intangible asset in business combination do you remember the example which we discussed so do you remember akash kandoi acquiring bb virtuals right so in this case whatever intangibles are getting acquired in this business combination akash kandoi will record the intangibles at fair value first point for saying purpose we call it as fair value but for akash kandoi ideally it is his cost okay second point whatever excess pc ak limited is paying over and above the net assets is goodwill because this is purchased goodwill we can record this as an intangible asset right so these two points are covered one point is whatever you acquire in business combination you will record at fair value right and look at the third point here whatever excess you pay over and above net assets is goodwill okay next point do you remember this if there is a customer database in selling company books which was self generated it cannot record it because it is prohibited to record self generated customer database but for the acquiring company it becomes a purchased intangible so he can of course record it right so here is the second point we can record customer database irrespective of whether it was shown in the books of selling company or not the last example was if there are two intangible items which can only be sold together that means if they are identifiable together so purchasing company will also record them as a single item right simple so this was the fourth point if intangible is separable but only together with another related item then recognize the intangible with the related item simple done sir <coughs> then under initial measurement there was this point 
internally generated intangible asset right what is the meaning of this so under this first see if there is any internally generated goodwill you will not recognize as an intangible asset goodwill if purchased it is recognized if internally generated it is not recognized why because it is not identifiable okay if it is something other than goodwill right so you will bifurcate everything into two phases do you remember my class example we discussed i wanted to make one special software for you guys right so whatever expense you are incurring in research phase you will you will transfer it to profit and loss whatever expense you are incurring in development phase you can capitalize right but how do we come to know that the development phase has begun so we will check for these six conditions six conditions right first is technical feasibility of completion second is intention to complete third is ability to use or sell the intangible asset fourth is demonstrate how it will generate future economic benefit fifth is availability of adequate resources like technical financial etc and the last point is reliably measure the expenditure sir all six are to be met on the date when all six are met development phase begins how do we remember this i had given you a trick two condition are of completion two condition are basically recognition criteria and two conditions start with a ability and availability simple <laughs> you can make your own or you can remember this okay also one clarification under the development phase also you will not capitalize all the expenses you will capitalize only the directly attributable expenses okay lastly some other important points relating to internally generated intangible asset first if you are not able to distinguish between under which phase we are falling you will classify as research, research phase second falling items should not be recognized as intangible if they are internally generated brands customer database publishing titles masters but if these intangibles were purchased then they can be recorded as intangible okay finally research and development project if we acquire a r d project from someone we will capitalize the r d project right but let's say for example we acquired an incomplete research project so if we acquire the incomplete research project you will capitalize the amount paid but after acquiring can i say on this project itself i will do some research by myself so self research which was conducted again such expense will be transferred to profit and loss and the self development cost which was incurred on this project you will capitalize it do remember this point this was initial measurement done next point is subsequent measurement same like pp we have two models cost and revaluation but but in this revaluation model we have one extra point which was not there in india 16 what is that point if you want to follow revaluation model you have to find the fair value of active market if active market does not exist then you cannot follow revaluation model active market is a market where the intangible can be frequently bought and sold right so if you have active market for intangible you can follow this model if you don't have active market by default you have only one model that is cost model simple right if you are following reval model again five points again everything is same like india 16 so see if it is same like india 16 i'm not revising it again why because we can revise it in india 16 naya simple right okay so if you are following cost model it is very simple if you are following reval model we have five points same but there is a point which is different here and that is this point see first is frequency evaluation same like 16 treatment of accumulated amortization we have two methods remember we can eliminate or do not eliminate okay now revaluation to be applied to entire class of asset when we say this that we need to apply it to entire class of asset right so this point was there in india 16 also but one new point is there and that is the exception point what the standard says is let's say for example i have five softwares i want to follow reval model for this for four software i have active market fair value but for one software i do not have active market fair value for the software where do not have active market fair value for that software you can follow cost model but for remaining you can follow reval model within the same class itself so here within the same class we are following two different models but let's say for example for all five softwares i had the fair value active active market fair value then in that case bifurcated models cannot be allowed then in that case you have to follow only one model for all the softwares right do remember this part this was not there in india 16 acha next point is treatment of revaluation gain loss same like india 16 and treat transfer of surplus to retained earnings do you remember once the asset is out of your books you will transfer the full balance of surplus to retained earnings this is not optional but there was one optional case as well in india 16 we used to call it excess depreciation here we call it excess amortization that right? calculation is discussed there but this is optional if the company wishes to it can do that okay next point subsequent cost incurred normally standard says that in case of intangible the subsequent cost do not result in any future economic benefits therefore such expenditure will be transferred to profit and loss but i discuss one extra case let's say for example you are 
increasing the validity of software by certain number of years where you feel you will get the benefit so you can capitalize it you can capitalize such subsequent expenditure okay then the list of few expenditure do you remember we we made a pinky promise that till our death if we see these items we will always transfer to profit and loss these are research startup cost training advertising relocation expenses then the next point is amortization amortization method we have three slmwd we know production amortization period starts when available for you cessates when either you transfer to index 105 if you have read this index 105 otherwise you will uh, stop depreciation when the asset is out of your books see the point of 105 you will understand only when you have done that index if you have not done it leave it okay okay amortizable amount is maximum cost minus residual value okay sir next point is residual value Achha, one more thing here 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 normally in index 16 also we discussed that depreciation or amortization based on the revenue earned is not appropriate you cannot amortize based on how much revenue are earning but there is one rare case where we can amortize based on revenue and that is when the life of the toll is dependent on revenue for example government gave you a license and told you that the toll does not have a specific life in number of terms of years but you can collect revenue you can collect toll up to 50 cr that means the life of the toll is based on the collection based on a revenue in this case you can you can amortize the license on the basis of toll collection that is your revenue okay next point is residual value always assume to be zero unless there is a commitment by third party or you feel there is an active market available for the intangible selling and it will exist at the end of the useful life if you feel either of the two exist then you can feel then you can say that there might be some residual value otherwise always assume to be zero next point is useful life if it is infinite you will not amortize you will test for impairment annually but if it is finite you will amortize it some guidance was given first guidance talks about let's say the validity is 40 years but if you feel you will get the benefit only for 10 years you will amortize in 10 years only next point talks about renewal period will you include the renewal period in the life of the uh, intangible asset so you will inc let's say for example i had a license of 10 years government gave me an option to renew for a further period of 5 years so will i include this renewal period as well so it depends on the intention of the company also you will include the renewal period only if there is supportive evidence that you will renew it if any conditions are there for renewal you will satisfy them and the cost of renewal is insignificant or not significant compared to the benefits right so in this case in either case you might include if these three conditions are met if not met then you will include then you will consider only 10 years to be the useful life next point was annual review as per india said amortization method residual value useful life you will review at each year and if there is any change change in accounting estimate perspective accounting for impairment we will discuss under index 36 last point was derecognition same like india 16 which talks about derecognizing the asset from the books it happens when you dispose of that is a sell the asset or when the life is over right gain loss might arise will be transferred to profit and loss on sale gain loss might arise on sale okay anyways so this was the conceptual revision of India 38 okay i hope uh, you understood each and every point so now in this session we will revise all the questions of India 38 we have already revised the concepts now we will move on towards the question but i am going to revise only the important questions important questions means the questions in which you will face some difficulties right so i will revise it the basic questions any which ways are getting covered once you know the concepts so now let's start the question revision the first question which we studied was illustration number three right so it talks about that you are doing some advertisement expense of 8 lakhs so ideally what we do is whatever advertisement expense you are doing we transfer it to profit and loss right but in achha, can we record advertisement as an intangible the answer is no right but in this question one thing was there that if you are making a payment of 8 lakhs only 7 lakhs was for current year 1 lakh for was for advertisement of next year that means this 1 lakh is prepaid for us so you will record 1 lakh as a prepaid and then you will light off that prepaid in the next year right so this you part you need to remember that the important part in this question was that advertisement is not an intangible but yes it can be a prepaid okay also further in the next year you are incurring full x also so we will, we will pass the entry for full x as well okay don't worry about it also achha, if you want to find this board notes you will find it on my telegram channel link is in the description okay don't worry so board notes i can upload on my telegram channel okay anyways so this was illustration number three only this prepaid part is important in this okay okay now another important question was illustration number six a classic question to test your concept of exchange now here what was the case was sun is acquiring software earth is from earth in exchange for license so if you see closely what sun is doing is sun is acquiring software and give him license but in this question they have asked from both companies point of view so for earth the situation will vice versa 
earth is acquiring license and giving up software carrying amount of both is given so now what i did was in this question first i wrote the concept of exchange like what are preferences do we give then there were three scenarios given the first scenario where both the farewells were available second scenario was where only farewell license was available in third scenario none of the farewells were available so how do we solve it so solve it company by company first solve for sun limited under all the three cases then solve for earth limited in all the three cases of course when you solve it you will try to uh, get the answer on your own but a good question you should definitely practice this question as well illustration number six seven you can do it do it on your own we will come on towards illustration number eight revision right so in this question what was there so in the year 11 12 it was said that uh, you are first doing some research then development you, the hint you will get in the next line okay so research phase expense transfer to profit and loss development phase expense you will capitalize it okay now recoverable amount was given acha what is the meaning of recoverable amount acha if till year you have not studied this index let me give you an overview of impairment so before discussing this question i gave you one overview of the concept of impairment what is the meaning of impairment it is defined in index 36 and the basic meaning of impairment is decline in the value of asset so if you want to check whether there is any impairment or no what you will do is you will try to find two values one is carrying amount and one is recoverable amount one is carrying amount one is recoverable amount okay so now and recoverable amount is what for finding recoverable amount we will have two amounts the value in use and the fair value less cost to sale of course this is defined in detail in index 36 so as of now we are not going that much depth if you are not aware of it but don't worry just imagine if you are using the asset you will get 1 lakhs but if you are selling the asset you will get only 90000 so what will you do you will of course use the asset because you are getting higher value in using so recoverable amount is higher of these two amounts right so now imagine your asset is being carried at 1 lakh 20 but the maximum amount you can recover is only 1 lakh that means the value at which the asset is being shown you will not be able to recover the whole value so that means there will be an impairment loss so if there is an impairment loss you will reduce the value of asset and book the loss okay also just to clarify some people get confused between impairment loss and revaluation loss both may be losses but the nature is different because in impairment loss we compare carrying amount and recoverable amount and in revaluation loss we compare carrying amount and fair value do remember this part okay sir let's proceed now so our capitalized amount was 900 in this question even the recoverable amount is given as 1000 so now imagine your carrying amount is 900 but the recovery which you will make is of 1000 so don't say there is an impairment gain of 1 100 rupees there is no concept of impairment gain either there will be impairment loss or there will be no impairment loss okay so here your carrying amount is 900 but you will recover more than your carrying amount so there is no issue with you, with this so your impairment loss will be zero okay then in the next year what do they say we have incurred a further expense of 6000 of course once the development phase begins all future expenditure will be in a development phase only so this will be capitalized so now your total amount becomes 6900 okay then it says that on the last day of the year it became available for you so next year we will amortize for one year and then on this date recoverable amount was also given so we will amortize for one year we find the carrying amount on this date recoverable amount was given so our carrying amount is 5750 recoverable amount is 5000 so of course there is an impairment loss because his carrying amount is higher but you will not recover this much so your impairment loss will be 750 charge it off to profit and loss simple clear yes sir this was a illustration number 8 a good question now we come on towards illustration number mm, let me see some good questions okay you can do this question illustration 13 on your own it is not a ldr question but just you can uh, refer this okay mm. even illustration number 21 you can just refer not ldr based on the concept of exchange but simple question okay directly come on towards illustration number 27 guys illustration number 27 a good question let's see what's in store for us <coughs> so it says in this question i'll give you a summary of this we incurred 18 lakhs for the whole year but in the current year first two months were research phase and from first june till the year end that is for 10 months it was development phase but the bifurcation of expense was not given so how do we bifurcate we have one information saying that 18 lakhs is for full year out of this 18 lakhs for 12 months two months is research phase so we can find out proposed at lena that 3 lakhs will be under research phase and the balance will be under development phase for 10 months you can capitalize 15 lakhs and you can transfer to profit loss 3 lakhs but what the company has done is company has shown 18 lakhs as full intangible this is the incorrect treatment company should show intangible only at 15 lakhs first part of the question is done now the next part of the question talks about recoverable amount 
सो जस्ट अ समरी ऑफ इट द रिकवरेबल अमाउंट ऑन द इयर एंड इज नाइन लैक्स सिक्सटी इमेजिन कैरिंग अमाउंट इज फिफ्टीन लैक्स बट यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू रिकवर इट यू विल रिकवर ओन नाइन लैक्स सिक्सटी सो देर इज एन ऑफकोर्स इम्पेयरमेंट लॉस राइट सो आइडली आई ऑल्सो पास अ एंट्री एट द इयर एंड माई असेट इज शोन एट एटीन लैक्स बट इट शुड बी रिड्यूस टू नाइन लैक्स सिक्सटी so i have to reduce the asset by two expenses one is research phase expense and one is impairment loss so i will reduce it by both the amounts and my intangible asset will be reduced by 8 lakh 40 simple question done and dusted this was illustration number 27 okay then acha question number 1 is also very good it says that you have a player with whom you have contracted to play for 5 years that means let's assume you are csk chennai super kings and that uh, cricket player will play with your team for 5 years so is that player an intangible asset for you the answer is no but is that contract with the player you have entered with a in a contract with the player that he will play with you for 5 years is that contract an intangible asset the answer is yes player is not an intangible asset but the contract with the player is an intangible asset okay do remember okay then acha question number 3 again a good question what is given here is first let's see what is asked so they are asking us to prepare balance sheet and profit and loss extract okay so now three elements are given in the first element they are saying pc 13.2 net asset 10 lakh so goodwill is 3.2 just to confuse you they are also saying life of goodwill is 10 years always remember goodwill is never amortized it is only tested for impairment annually so you will not amortize goodwill so it will stay at 3.2 lakhs only first part second part In second part, you are acquiring franchise for eighty lakhs, so you will capitalize it. But also, you are paying two percent royalty fees. If you are acquiring an intangible in such an agreement where you are paying upfront fixed cost and based on sales every year, you will pay some royalty. That royalty based on sales will be transferred to profit and loss, and that upfront payment of uh, acquiring will be capitalized. So eighty lakhs will be capitalized, and the two percent royalty fee which you will pay every year will be transferred to profit and loss as and when you are paying it. Second part is done. Okay, acha. In the second part, they are saying that we acquired on fourth May. So ideally, amortization should come on a uh, day on the basis of days, na. But one line was mentioned that in the year of acquisition, in the year you acquire, you will take a full year amortization. The company follows this policy. So by this line, a solution becomes easy. Why? Because in the year in which you are acquiring the intangible, you will amortize for full year. I am not saying this. The question says this very clearly. Okay. So for franchise, do not no need to see the number of days calculation. You will amortize for the full year. Okay, in the year of acquire. Okay. Then third case, you have a copyright. To register the copyright, you incur two lakh fifty. You will capitalize, but also you incur some legal cost, but not for the copyright. You incur the legal cost to prosecute a copyright infringement against the competitor. Right. So this seven lakhs incur to prosecute a copyright infringement will be transferred to profit and loss. Okay. Copyright life is ten years. is this clear to everyone yes perfect right so as i said this will be transferred to profit and loss so you will just amortize 2 lakh 50 over a period of 10 years right this line is very important in the question guys okay now just see the uh, format also if you want to see so they were asking me extract so i gave them the extract right under the extract there are intangible assets intangible we have three elements goodwill franchise copyright so goodwill No amortization, franchise amortization of one year, copyright amortization of one year. Okay, so total of the closing balance of all intangible will be shown in balance sheet. In profit loss, what all elements will be? What all elements will be there? In profit and loss, in profit and loss, we will have revenue from operations, right? Then it was given in the question. Okay, and how much ever revenue earned, two percent royalty fees is paid. So we pay two percent royalty also. the amortization will come and then the infringement case against the competitor that expense is also transferred to profit loss so that will also come right this is done and dusted apart from this um there is one illustration number 5 not ldr but a good question i'll just give you a gist of it we have an intangible with a life of 15 years but 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 we are intending to sell only after 5 years so we will amortize over 5 years also we have a, a commitment from a third party for a 60% Uh, sale value that means after 5 years when you sell it that party has committed you that he will give you 60% of the day one value that means this 60% becomes residual value for you because as per index 38 if you want to consider any amount under residual value you need to have commitment from a third party so in this case we have a commitment so residual value will be there so accordingly your amortization will be changed huh? so The question has mentioned that the company has amortized for fifteen years, assuming residual value to be zero. The treatment by company is incorrect, right? So you need to give the correct treatment. The cost is twelve lakhs. Life should be taken as five years. 
residual value should be taken as 7.2 lakhs. Your amortization will be this and the carrying amount will be this. Also, how much concepts to present in the exams, you can write these relevant concepts in the exams. Right. So this was the question revision of index 38. I hope you like it. Also, if you like it, do subscribe to this channel because more such revision videos will come. And thank you so much for watching this video. Again, I'm seeing the board notes which I, on which I have solved the solution. You can find this on my Telegram channel. Link is in the description. Do join the channel. Okay. So thank you so much. Bye-bye everyone. Take care. See you all. Bye-bye.